Now let's move on to the topic of cash and internal controls. Specifically, the internal control we're going to focus in on is the bank reconciliation. So as an overview, any company needs to have some level of internal controls to help them prevent theft and misuse of the assets. So what that means is they don't want customers or employees stealing their assets, misusing them. Uh, they want to make sure everything is properly protected and that we can report the proper balances on the financial statements themselves. Now this module focuses in on cash because for most companies it's the most commonly stolen asset. It's uh, generally the easiest to steal and get away with because it's hard to track. If you steal someone's vehicle, their delivery vehicle, it's easier to track than if you steal someone's cash. So the thought here is that we want to make sure we can protect cash. The bank reconciliation is one of many internal controls that we could have uh, to help protect cash, or at least to identify you know, what cash we have, what the balance should be, so that we can identify if something has gone wrong. So with the bank reconciliation, and this is something you can do for your personal accounts as well, but for the company accounts, we're going to see the format that tends to be used. It's all about timing in this case. The question is, what does the bank know about the cash account, and what do we know as a company? Uh, again, we may know different things. The bank knows certain things that we haven't found out about yet, and we know certain things that the bank doesn't know about yet. Maybe a, a check is still outstanding, a deposit was made after the cutoff date, so all of that. Some examples of things that may exist that cause these differences. Again, if the deposit is made after the cutoff date for the bank, so yes, we deposited the money overnight. It's a valid deposit. We've already got it listed in our cash account, but the bank doesn't know about it yet. Outstanding check that is not cleared. If we write a check to somebody, we know we've spent the money, so we have to subtract it out. The bank won't know about it until it's cleared, until that person cashes the check. So again, that's where the timing difference comes in service charge. So the bank knows about this. They've charged us. We won't find out about it until the uh, bank statement actually comes. Now, a not as common situation may be when a deposit is made directly to the bank on our behalf. So in other words, a customer, you know, if we have what's known as a lockbox arrangement, customers may send their payments directly to our bank instead of to us the bank handles the processing of those payments. So we don't know about it until the bank tells us about it. So the bank already knows their balance includes that. Our cash account balance does not yet. Non-sufficient funds checks. This is when a customer writes a check to us. We think it's good, so we include it in our cash account. Then we deposit it to the bank, and they tell us that, no, it's not good. It's an in, invalid check. So they send it back to us. They have not included it on the cash uh, balance from the bank side yet. So we have to take it out of our cash account on our side. Interest income, kind of the opposite of the service charge. Here they're paying us interest. We don't know about it until we get the bank statement. And then anything that's left over could be an error on either the bank side or on our side through our bookkeeping. So let's take a look at some examples of how we would actually do a reconciliation. For the starting point here is the beginning balance. So we're going to do uh, the bank reconciliation, the cash balance per, per our records as of July 31st, 2015 was $66,955. That's what we think our account balance is. The bank statement on that same date tells us that it's actually $15,875. You can tell we have quite a bit of a difference, and that's not an issue. We want to see what the true balance is. So we take a look at all the different information we have. In this case, a deposit in the amount of $52,000 was deposited into the night depository of the bank on July 31st, but obviously that would not have been included in the bank's statement balance on that date. It's already included in our balance. We don't have to adjust for it. It's already there. 
It was not in the bank balance. So we have to add in a $52,000 addition, an adjustment on the bank side. After that piece of reconciliation, we're getting closer, but we're still not done. Now we have two checks. Check number 354, that was the amount of $575, and check number 365 in the amount of $1,500. These were both outstanding as of this bank statement date. And what that means is we already knew about that, and it's already been included in our book balance. We subtracted it out uh, at the time that we wrote the check. The bank doesn't know about it yet, so we have to adjust it by subtracting it out of that side. If you add those two up, it's $2,075. Now we have an NSF check in the amount of $500 written by Jay Smith, a customer. It was returned by the bank to the company in the July 31st bank statement. What that means is they would not have even included it in their in the bank balance. It's not even there at all, so we don't have to take it out or add it in or anything. On the book side, however, we initially thought that was valid money, so it's included in this $66,955, but we have to now take it out because we know it's not a valid deposit. Now we have a bank service charge, so the bank has already included that in their initial adjustment or their initial balance. We have to subtract that money out of the book side because we know we've now spent the money. Interest, kind of the opposite. Again, it's already included in the bank balance. We have to add it to the book side because it's additional money. Now we get that lockbox situation. So the bank collected $1,000 from a customer, H. Doe, on our behalf as part of a lockbox arrangement that we have with this bank. So this $1,000 is already included in the $15,875. We didn't know about the collection until now, so now we have to add the $1,000 in. Then we have a bank error. The bank erroneously posted somebody else's check, so in other words, it's a withdrawal, in the amount of $5,000 to our account. They subtracted out $5,000 from us when they shouldn't have, so now we have to add the money back in to correct it. And of course, we'll probably notify the bank. They made another mistake that month, the exact opposite. They erroneously posted another company's deposit into our account in the amount of $3,000. So we have to subtract that out because it's not really our money. So hopefully in a, in a real life situation, you don't see these types of bank errors, certainly two in one month, but this is how you would handle them. Finally, if we reconcile the bank statement, we may notice that we had an error with one of our checks. We noticed a check that was written to pay for the current month's utilities. It was in the amount of 250, but it was improperly recorded in our own books as 520. We transposed the first two digits. So if you subtract those out, what that means is we had an error in the amount of $270. We re recorded this check as $520, which was $270 more than it should have been. So we took too much money out of our account. Now we have to put it back in. We add in the $270 for this reconciliation. After you're done at the very bottom, you now see that we have the $67,800 on both sides. We're good to go. Now we've done the reconciliation and that's fine. We know the bank had some adjustments to make and they'll probably make them as time goes on. By the next month we may say many of those cleared up. But our issues, anything we had to reconcile on our side, we're the only ones that make the adjusting entries. The bank will take care of their stuff we have to adjust our own side so that our cash account is proper. So what that basically means, again, is that anything on the book side, any of these adjustments, have to have a journal entry. And it would include this $270 as well. So let's take a look at all of those entries. Uh, first of all, the NSF check in the amount of $500. 
It was returned by the bank to the company. So we are going to have to put it back on the books of this customer. So we are debiting accounts receivable to increase it for this $500. We debit accounts receivable. It's an asset. We increase it. And we credit cash, which decreases cash, to take that off the books. We're reducing the cash account because we really don't have the cash anymore. Now we have the bank service charge in the amount of $50. It's an expense. So we're debiting that account to increase it. Cash, we're reducing it by $50 to decrease that. We no longer have that cash. Interest, we are debiting cash to increase it by this $125. We are crediting interest revenue by $125 to increase that account. We've earned more revenue. And finally, we have that lockbox situation. Here, we debit cash to increase it by $1,000. And this customer owed us money for something. So they would have had an accounts receivable set up. Now we are crediting accounts receivables to reduce that particular account. They no longer owe us the money. So now we credit that account for $1,000. Now that is the last adjusting entry in this particular section. It is a good lead in to the next module which takes us into accounts receivables and bad debt expense.